welcome and warm greetings. In this session, we will learn about what, how and why of indigenous fermented dairy products. And after going through this session, you will be able to define the importance and basic principles of fermented milk products. You will be able to outline the steps involved in manufacture of dai, misti dai, lassi and chaj. And we will be also able to identify important defects in dye. Now, we know the importance of the fermented dairy products. They are enjoyed by everyone. The demand is continuously increasing because of their characteristics, refreshing acid taste, good digestibility, health promoting characteristics and their proximity to functional foods. Now, the genesis of these products came with the help of preservation. The basic process was preservation of the milk that led to the fermentation process. And in due course of time, by recognizing the nutritional and therapeutic values associated with the fermented dairy products, the popularity is increasing and they are being available throughout the world. In our country, Aryans adopted dai as a natural healthful delicacy and Vedic literature refers to its, its potent in the diet. Now, the basic principle, it involves the oxidation of lactose, which is the main carbohydrate in the milk with the help of starter culture. And when there is oxidation, it results in a range of products. Primarily, it is organic acid, lactic, that is lactic acid and some flavoring compounds are there. Now, when this acid is produced, this acid has a preservation effect that is the growth of spoilage microorganisms is stopped and simultaneously pathogenic microorganisms are also stopped into this principle. So, the starter culture plays an important role in the fermentation process and as I mentioned, they basically develop the acidity and subsequently because of the acidity, there is a coagulation of the milk, there is a texture formation there is a flavor production, pleasant acid taste is there and we get the protection against the pathogens and spoilage is there. Now, we studied the major three groups were there, low acid, medium acid, high acid and acid alcohol. Our dye falls under the medium acid. So, we will study about the dye in detail today. It is a well known accepted fermented dairy product and it is prepared and consumed in household on day to day basis. How do we make the dai at home? We take the milk, boil it, cool it to the room temperature or what we call as a incubation temperature and we inoculate with the starter culture. Here we use the black back slopping that is the previous day culture is used and that is why the quality of the dai varies from day to day and its incubation is done for 4 to 6 hours and it is consumed as part as such or part of meal or raita. Basically, it is associated with the therapeutic properties and it cures, cures gastrointestinal disorders. Now, other features are it can be used for directly consumption and production of desi butter and then subsequently for the ghee. The other products which are prepared are like chakka, shirikhan, raita and lassi. The synonymous which we use are the dai, takra, thain, pengu, these are some of the words which is which are used. Now, dai can be prepared from the whole milk, skim milk, standard milk and specialized milk, special milk. It may contain sugar and fruits are there. Acidity of normal dai is less than 0.7 percent while sour dai we classify if the acidity is more than 0.7 percent is there. Around 10 percent of the milk produced is used for dye making and its production is continuously increasing in the organized sector as well as the organized unorganized sector. Now, let us see how do we define it. First, we go to the what are the regulations define the product. Once you have to market the product, you have to follow the regulations. The food safety and standard regulations it defines it as a, a semi product obtained from the pasteurized or boiled milk by souring 
that is by using the harmless lactic bacteria or any other bacterial culture can be used. We normally use the lactic acid bacteria issue. It may contain cane sugar that is sugar. Now what are the standards for the fat and SNF which are the important components? It should be same as from the which milk it is prepared. To explain it like if you are using the word cow dahi it should you it should have the standard of cow milk. If you are using the toned milk dahi then it should have the standard of toned milk which is available. Similarly once we say double toned milk it should have the standard of double toned milk. Now if you do not specify the type of milk which is used then if you are marketing your product you may have to follow the buffalo milk standard for this. Similarly ISI also specifies for the uh, this product how does it specify it qualifies more how does it qualifies it says pleasing flavor clean acid taste no off flavor. Then about body and texture it says firm solid body and texture should be uniform that is there should be no waste separation should be there. It classifies the product based on the type of culture. Now when we are using the mild or sweet dye like what we said less than 0.7 percent then it is made from the mesophilic or lactococci, leuconostic can be also there as an added flavor for, for flavor. But when we use the sour dye then we have to go for the thermophilic bacteria which are generally employed in the manufacture of yogurt. So the, you can see the in detail the characteristics and the requirements which are given in the ISI specification acidity. If it is a sweet dye it should be less, maximum is 0.7 percent. If we the acidity increases more than 1 percent lactic acid then it is called the say sour dye is there. It also specifies the yeast and mold count it should be around 100 and should be there. Coliform maximum is 10 and phosphatase test should be negative is there. Now let us see the uh, food safety and standard regulations have introduced the microbiological standards. So how does it reflect the table? A comprehensive table has been prepared to show the composition of this product. Now acidity the food safety regulations does not sp specify but as you mentioned the ISI standards or what we call the Bureau of Indian standards it specifies in range of 0.6 to 0.8 depending upon the type of dye. If it is a sweet dye it will be less than 0.7 if it is a more than 0.7 then it will go to into the sour dye. Total plate count should be not more than 10 lakhs. Coliform count is mentioned in both the standards it should be 10 per gram and 10 per gram maximum is there. Similarly our food safety regulations it specify E. coli about it should be absent in 1 gram, salmonella should be absent in 25 grams, similarly staphylococcus aureus should not be more than 100, yeast and mold count should be not more than 100 per gram should be there. Similarly for the other microorganisms like anaerobic spores absent in 1 gram, similarly listed mono monocytogens it should be absent, phosphatase test I say standard mentions about the negative and the other requirement as we mentioned that it should have the same fat percentage and SNF as from which milk it is prepared. And the ISI says that they should conform to the requirements of the food safety regulation standards should be met to this as well. After knowing the product next comes into the mind what are the steps in manufacturing. The steps involved are filtration or clarification of the milk, then standardization of milk homogenization, heat treatment, addition of starter culture, incubation and setting of curd and then cooling these are the steps involved in manufacture. Let us first see the traditional method of dye making which is being used in our household. We take the milk and boil the milk. At home level we normally boil the milk but at the halwai or what we call the confectionery shop it is concentrated in open pack that is some simmering is done and where some concentration also take place. Then this is brought down to the cool to the room temperature that is what we call scientifically incubation temperature. 
at incubation temperature, we inoculate with the 0.5 to 1 percent of starter culture. As I mentioned, here we could use the word backsloping or previous take culture is used. And that is why at the home level, the con because of this only, the quality deteriorates with due course of the time. So, we have to change the culture and improve the quality. Then there is a incubation for overnight and when there are winter is there, normally at home level, we cover the utensil with a woolen cloth so that the curd is properly set up. In the con confectionery shop, normally dye is prepared in the earthenware and then it is stored at the cool place it is there. Now, how do we manufacture dye at the industrial level or that is organized sector is there. First receiving of milk is there, then we preheat the milk to 35 to 40 degrees centigrade. Then filtration and clarification is done, the objective is to remove the any of the dust particles which have come because the milk journey starts from the producers to producers level to the milk plant. So, during this process there could be some dust particles or some other particles, so they are filtered and filtration clarification is best done at 35 to 40 degree centigrade. Then we come to the standardization. As we mentioned, it should meet to the standards of the milk whichever. So, we have to standardize the milk. Normally, the practice is to increase the SMF percentage because this gives the proper body and texture to the to the curd. Next, we go to the preheating. The milk is preheated to 60 degree centigrade because that is the 60 to 65 degree temperature is right temperature for homogenization of the milk. Homogenization, when we do the homogenization, it gives the uniform texture to the product. There is a no fat separation is there and it is done as a, it can be done in two stage, but normally the one stage 176 per kg per square centimeter is sufficient. Then we heat the product, pasteurize it to the 80 to 90 degree centigrade for 15 to 30, 30 minutes. Now, the heating plays a very important role. The heating should be done at a higher temperature and like that is 90 degree centigrade for 10 minutes should be minimum because it improves the quality of the product. Then the product is cooled down to the what we call the incubation temperature. Now, there are two methods are there normally what we call as, as the long time fermentation where we cool it to the around 25 to 30 degree centigrade that is mesophilic is there and it will take a long time it will uh, be there. Then we add the culture and then we pack it and incubate it for 20 to 25 hours for 16 to 18, 18 hours and dye is prepared. Then the dye prepared is cooled and stored at 4 to 5 degree centigrade. So, the starter culture plays in a very important role and if we are going for the thermophilic culture, then the temperature will be also in the range of 40 to 43 and the time will be also in the range of 4 to 5 hours will be there. Now, as soon as the curd is set, the, that is normally nowadays, we have to regularly check the pH. If the pH comes around 4.6, then we have to cool the product to 4 to 5 degree centigrade. Now, this is the chemical composition of dye. Once we prepare from the whole milk dye, it is the water percentage is around 85 to 88 percent. Skim milk will have more water because fat does not exist. In the whole milk dye, the fat will be in 5 to 8 percent, protein will be 3.2 to 3.4 and lactose will be 4.6 to 5.2 and lactic acid 0 0.5 to 1.1. Around 10 to 15 percent of lactose which is present in the milk is converted into lactic acid. Similarly, if you see the skim milk composition as the fat is minimum 0.05 to 0.1 and protein is in the range of 3.3 to 3.5, lactose is 4.7 to 5.3 and lactic acid is 0 0.5 to 1.5 is there. Now, what are the factors which affect the quality? First is the quality of the milk, that is the raw milk. It should be fresh, negative clot on boiling test should be there. The microbiological quality should be very high and it should be free from the off flavors, mustatic milk, lapolitic density, 
residual antibiotics and germicides because these can affect the growth of the starter culture. Bacteriophages are also to be avoided. I mean, so they should not be present or add together in the milk. Anything which retards the growth of starter culture should be avoided. And that is like we mentioned, static milk, lipolytic density, residual antibodies, germicides and bacteriophages is there. Then the second factor which is very important is level of heat treatment and concentration. Probably because of our uh, traditional method where the halwais or confectionaries are constant, continuously simmering the milk, the concentration take place and that is why the quality of the dahi prepared from the traditional method is very better as compared to our home level. But we can at industrial level, we give the good heat treatment that is around 90 degree centigrade for 10 to 15 minutes to ensure that the proper heat treatment is there and the quality is maintained. Now, next very important step is fermentation conditions that is type of starter culture, amount of starter culture and incubation temperature. Now, this varies with the type of starter culture. Whether we are going for the long time fermentation or short time fermentation. So, we have to see and depending upon that we have to select the starter culture should be there and cooling and storage is also important. As soon as the product is prepared that is the curd has been set to the required pH, it should be immediately cooled and stored into the temperature. Now, it has been seen that if the fermentation is that it takes a longer time, the quality is better as compared to the short time fermentation is there. So, the starter culture plays an important role. What type of starter culture we use? It is Lactococcus, Lactococcus lactis and subspecies lactis or Kermoris can be used or diastyl lactis could be also used. Normally, we also use Lucanostic for the flavor component is there. And if we are, we can also use the Streptococcus thermophilus, but if we want the more sour milk or less time, then we have to go for the Lactobacillus bulgaricus and which is more prominent in the sour dye is there. And nowadays, there are direct vat set or inoculum culture are available. So, we have to, we can go for the direct culture from the market and use. Then I mentioned that the heating is very important role. Now, what does the heating does? When we heat the milk at 90 degree centigrade, it denatures and coagulates milk albumin and globulin which are whey proteins and because of their denaturation, there is a enhancement of viscosity and what the product we get like a custard like consistency is because of this only. So, this is the important step. The more ad second advantage is it kills the contaminating and competitive bacteria which are present. Otherwise, if these bacteria grow, they can spoil the product. And then there is a development of a sterile medium will be there. We also remove the air from the medium because they normally prefer absence of oxygen into the system for the growth. Thermal breakdown of protein also releases peptones and sulfhydryl group which are the nutrients to starter bacteria. The simmering treatment is better than the simple boiling because of some antioxidant activities and ACE inventory activities. Now, what are the principles for the quality product? Now, basically what we have to do is increase the total solid that is to increase the SNF percentage. You see if the SNF is around 8 to 9, you increase up to 10 to 11 percent because it enhances the water holding capacity is there. Homogenization is also preferable because it prevents creaming and uniform distribution of fat. Heating of the milk as specified, it should be more than 80 percent because of denaturation of whey proteins, it increases the water binding capacity is there. Then the other important thing is culture, spec specific culture. The culture should be selected very properly so that there is no contamination, uh, there is no bacteriophage and depending upon the culture and depending upon our fermentation requirement, we should select the culture. Then we have to incubate at appropriate time temperature profile so that the growth of the bacteria can take place and lactic acid develop should take place. Then proper cooling, packaging and storage should be there for the 
good quality product is there. Now, what does the market quality when we see, come to that? Color normally is preferred as a yellow creamy for the cow milk dye and creamy white for the buffalo. It should be free from the browning. Appearance should be smooth and glossy surface. There should be creamy layer on top. The flavor should be mild, pleasant aroma and clean as it is and free from off flavor. Body should be soft and firm and when we cut the curd, it should be free from gas holes and the way pockets. Acidity is around 0 0.75 to 0.85 is there. So, these are the marks. Now, we come to the what are the benefits of this. The first is as we mentioned for gastrointestinal purposes, it helps in a smooth digestion is there. Then the other is advantages of insomnia. If you feel that you are not getting sleep, if you take the cut, you will feel the sleepy is there. It is also a remedy for the jaundice, similarly for the duodenal ulcer and then prevents premature old age. You will, you will feel you will feel like a stamina, vitality is there and that is why many of the sports players take the fermented dairy products. It is also beneficial in skin disorders and enhances the lifespan of the human beings is there. Then it is also useful in the yeast infection if it takes place from the body. It boosts the Im immune system and it gives the better source of calcium as compared to milk. These are some of the benefits which we also studied in the general introduction to the fermented dairy products. But these advantages has been well reflected in our literature and is well recognized in our in the traditional method of healing is there. After knowing the benefits, but what are the common defects of dye which can take place? First is the flavor defect is there. Sometimes you will find there is an insufficient flavor is there. This insufficient flavor could be because of the three reasons. That is the possible causes are whether the citrate level is very low or poor quality, quality starter is there or low dye style content is there. So, the remedy is accordingly. If you want the good flavor, if you add slightly sodium citrate 0 0.02 to 0 0.05, 0 0.05 percent, you can have the better flavor or you change the culture or immediately cool the product once the, the uh, it has been set uh, is there. Oxidized flavor, this is because of the oxidation. So, there is a two reasons are there, copper contamination or exposure to the fluorescent light or sunlight is there. So, they should never be set into the copper utensils. I think this we all know by the at the household level and other things. Then we save the product from the direct sunlight or UV lights, it should be avoided. Yeasty or cheesy flavor if it is there, this means the contamination has taken place somewhere. So, we have to check the sanitation check is there, which is very important. Rancid flavor, this means lapolytic activity has taken place. So, there could be mixing of pasteurized and unpasteurized milk and that is why are the ingredients prior to incubation, this could lead to this. High acid, when there is a high acid, this means either we have added more culture or incubation time is more or you, you have used the sour milk is there. So, we have to be take care, proper culturing should be there, incubation time once it reach the proper pH, we should withdraw for immediately shift for the cooling and we should always use the fresh milk. Green uh, flavor when we sometimes we call the yogurt flavor, it is a acetaldehyde accumulation is there and proper incubation could be there. Now, then what are some body and texture defects are there? These are like a weak body, insufficient heat treatment to the mix or too low milk, then agitation uh, during the fermentation process it takes place. These are the of the problem of the insufficient uh, heat treatment or too low SNF. What we have to take care is a heat treatment should be proper, then increase the SNF uh, percentage and there should be no agitation after the fermentation is there. Similarly, if the texture is grainy, this means there is a high acidity, there is a improper dispersion of skim milk powder is there and then we have to cool the uh, uh, product immediately to the 5 degree centigrade. Synergies mean that once the, the waste separation takes place, this mean what are the causes? 
insufficient heat treatment, SNF is low or agitation is to be, has taken place during the fermentation. So, we have to take care of these products in the immediately. Similarly, there could be ropiness. Ropiness is always associated with the psychotrophic microorganisms and this contamination has taken place or the culture is impure. So, normally the before pasteurization if there is a long cold storage of the milk it should be avoided. And chalky or powdery texture could be there this means there is a excess amount of skim milk powder is there and we should use the good quality of skim milk powder. Weighing of that is excessive acid development the proper incubation should be there. Now we come to the misti dahi it is a popular traditional sweetened uh, fermented milk product and it is a popular in a eastern part of the India. Its other names are misti dahi, lal dahi these are the name and normally in the religious any auspicious function we use it and consume it and it is normally served as chilled is there. Now let us see the composition the whatever the composition of dahi is there we add to it the uh, sugar percentage like you can see low fat, medium fat, high fat In this the fat percentage is 2 to 3, milk SNF is 13 to 14, the sugar percentage is 17 to 19 percent is there and the total solid is range of 32 to 36 percent is there. Now what are the factors affecting the quality? As the same factors which affect the quality also affect the misty day. that is the quality of the milk should be good, level of heat treatment should be high fermentation should be proper and immediately cooling and storage should be there. Now what are the traditional method of the making the misti dai? We take the milk and boil it and with the required amount of sugar and concentrate over a low fire. When it develops a light cream to light brown color, then we cool it to the inoculation temperature, we inoculate with the lactic culture and then we fill into the earthen pot and incubate overnight and transfer the firm set curd to the cool storage is there. You can see the, uh, the diagram steps involved that is with the buffalo milk you standardize it to 3.5 percent, 9 percent SNF, preheat it to 65 to 70, homogenize, concentrate to 1.44 percent, addition of sugar approximately 14 percent so that in the final product is you will get around 70 to 18 percent, heating at 85 degree centigrade for 10 minutes cooling to 40 degrees centigrade, incubation LF40 culture is there or any thermo thermophilic culture you can use and then incubate for 6 to 7 hour and storage at 4 degrees centigrade. So, we will get the misty day. Now the next product which is very popular is lassi. Now this is a type of a dairy fermented drink is there. It is what we call the stirred dye is there or like a stirred yogurt is there. Now in this we are ready to serve fermented uh, milk is there, refreshing soft drink is there, it is a mild acidic flavor and sweetest taste is there and it is made from the pasteurized uh, milk is there. Now basically what happens when we take the dahi it is broken into the gel is broken and it is broken because of when we mix it, pump it and then the cool the product uh, it is there and increases the during this breakdown and the gel breakdown the studying temperature and intensity influences the, the quality of the let us see. Now these are some of the characteristics which we know that it should be white to creamy, white viscous liquid should be there, good quality laxi should have creamy consistency should be there and quality will depend upon the type of milk which we are using. But in some cases even the butter milk or chaach is also equated to the lassi is there. But normally which is available in the market it has the composition of around 1.5 to 3.8 percent of fat, milk total solid around 9 percent, sugar 13 to 20 percent and we can use the uh, emulsifier and the stabilizers like sodium dihydrogen phosphate or pectin and acidity should be 0.7 percent is there. The steps are same like standardize the milk, heat it, add the starter culture, incubate, add the sugar, homogenize and then cool it. This is the flow diagram that is you take the milk, standardize pasteurize, homogenize, culture and then set the curd and then break the curd, add the sugar syrup into this. Sugar syrup should be normally it should be pasteurized and then we add uh, addition of essence. Then we homogenize it or pass through the pumps 
and then pack and store it is there. This is also when we are going for the short uh, time, then we have to can heat it up to cool to 90 degrees centigrade, cool to 40 degrees centigrade, culture it, fill in the cans and within 4 to 5 hours it can be prepared. You break the curd, add water to the uh, milk so that the milk is having the 8 percent total milk solid. Similarly, sugar syrup is also added to 12 percent is there. Again, you can pasteurize also so that it will give the longer life of the product and add the color, flavor and store it. Similarly, charge is also an uh, important product is there which is becoming very popular in this and in traditional method it used to be prepared from the sweet curd, but now we are using it. We are using the toned milk, when we take the toned milk and we prepare like a dahi, heat to 90 degrees centigrade, cool to 40 degrees centigrade, add the culture at 43 degrees centigrade. Then we have to add 60 percent of the pasteurized water is there that makes this product and we can make the both types is there. We can go for the plain charge or we can add the jeera or the this product because they are the dairy fermented drinks, they are not the milk is there and we store it. These are the some of the compositions like the probiotic drink what is the, you can see the protein around 0.8 percent in masala charge is 1.1, plain charge is 1.8 and in lassi is 1.9 percent is there. Similarly, carbohydrates are more in the cases of uh, lassi and in probiotic drink added sugar because of the added sugar is there and fat is in this area. Now to conclude that dai is an important and popular product and the factors which affect the quality of the product is quality of the milk, heat treatment, starter culture and incubation temperature. The desirable quality should be pleasing flavor, a clean acid taste, there should be no off flavor, it should have a firm solid body and texture be uniform with no gas source and waste separation and dai is very good as a digestive, nutritive and useful in gastrointestinal elements, ailments. Thank you very much.